ways whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. If we're going to serve the Lord acceptably, there must be that grace. The grace that cleanses and the grace that changes our lives and the grace we know the grace of God has come in. We deny all ungodliness and we follow the righteous way of the Lord. We're pure, we're holy, we're sanctified. He purifies us and redeems us from all iniquity because His blood cleanses us. What's the point serving the Lord here? What's the point singing here? What's the point ushering here? What's the point doing the work of God here? And then when the trumpet sounds, you are left behind. You are like, you'll be like the bus conductors, helping other people to go in to that bus. And then the bus leaves and you're left behind. When you say you're ministering, you say you're preaching, you say you're singing, you say you're serving the Lord, you say you're a worker in the church, and yet your life is not tried. And the foundation of God standard sure. Having this seal is not going to change that standard for anyone. And if you are just serving the Lord, and there's no purity there, there's no sanctification there, there's no holiness there, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, we're reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, we're reading here from verse 6. Matthew 5, verse 6. It tells us here that blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are they, blessed are they, we do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Look up here. Being merciful is not giving the work of the Lord like a toy to a kind of childish person. A childish person, you cannot say stand up there, go that way, sit up there, everybody stand up now. Now we're going to pray, and then the fellow is, whatever it is, is offended. You cannot say, this is what God requires. You cannot say, this is the standard of the word of God. Once you say that, the fellow is angry and swells up. And then you want to give the work of the Lord to him like a toy to appease the little child. We don't do that. You want to give the work of God to that girl. Because now that girl is so snobbish and rude and angry and will, you know, kind of do whatever, swelling up, and then you say to calm them down. You bribe her with the work of God. The work of God is not a toy. And we need to understand that when it says blessed are the merciful, you don't give the good sin, the holy sin unto the dog. You will give, you can give them water when they are thirsty. You can give them food when they are hungry but not the work of God. Blessed are the merciful. You give material things to the people when they need it. That's the mercy we're talking about. And if they do wrong and they repay, you forgive them and they go ahead. Then in verse 8, it says in verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart. Pure in language, pure in lifestyle, pure in behavior, pure from their inner man. That's the words of Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What if they are impure? What if they are defiled? What if they don't want holiness? What if you there does not want holiness and purity of heart and you want to remain polluted? I'm sorry for you. You'll be a vessel unto dishonor. And you will not be useful in the household of faith. Not only that, you will not get to heaven. Pollution will not get to heaven. Defilement will not get to heaven. Angry people, except they repent, will not get to heaven. Bitter people, 
people holding malice they'll not get to heaven and the people that are living in sin public or private and there's no repentance and there's no regeneration there's no heaven polluted vessels in of dishonor without salvation we're looking at second timothy once again second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 20 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor there are some people that are it's a shame to be identified with them sometimes to see what they do and it's a shame to say we're going to the same church sometimes it may be in the bus when you pick up a quarrel and a terrible fight with the bus conductor you want to stay away ah, is this so and so i didn't know that this is the way she lives this is the way he reacts and sometimes says buying and selling and the fellow flares up and begins to say some words that you have not had those words for 20 years and it's coming out of her mouth say what the world is so much in this woman the world is so much in this man how could you say that are you not born again are you not a child of god he said leave me with him i will show him something it's not showing him grace it's not showing him humility it's not showing him love it's not showing him peace of mind and the peace of god i will show him something and then you find them they tie their apart very well if it requires a fight i tell you i will fight with you hey you go to church even if you are not born again you go to church you are on your way to salvation on your way to heaven how can you do that those are polluted vessels of dishonor they dishonor to god a dishonor to christ a dishonor to the church a dishonor to the kingdom of god and it said those polluted vessels don't have salvation look at osea chapter 8 osea chapter 8 and I'm reading here from verse 8. Hosea chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 8. Hosea chapter 8 verse 8. It says, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles. Listen to this. A vessel wherein is no, ple is no pleasure. God does not have pleasure in such vessels you know what had happened to them look at verse 3 Israel has cast off the thing that is good the enemy shall pursue him they cast off the law of God the restraint of the law the righteousness of the law the repentance required by the law they cast that off repentance is no more part of their doctrine righteousness is no more part of their lifestyle restitution i am sorry those three words have been have left their mouth for a long time they never say i am sorry to anybody they can do evil they can fight and they can be convinced that they've done something that is not right privately they will go and regret not repent privately they go and regret but to say i am sorry and to have repentance that's gone they cast off repentance they cast off restitution they cast off righteousness they cast off the life of the believer israel are forsaking the sin that is good the enemy shall pursue him look at verse 12 israel verse 12 i have written to him the great things of my lord but they are count they were counted as a strange thing they count holiness strange they count sanctification strange and they count purity of life they count that strange i've written to him 
have proclaimed unto him and declared unto him the great things of my Lord the great privilege in the kingdom of God and I will count it as a strange thing look at what God said in conclusion because of that Israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel in whom there is no pleasure Jeremiah chapter 22 there are vessels in which God does not have pleasure God does not have delight and God will not use them. You may put them there into service, whatever service render will not be used of God. You may put them there because you know they must be there. This one must be there. The Lord will not use the polluted vessel. Sin pollutes anyone. Evil pollutes anyone. And it's just been not just been there physically. You must be there spiritually. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 28. Is this man Coniah? He despised broken idol. You see, vessel wherein is no pleasure. You see that the vessel in which God does not have pleasure. If there is sin in your life. If there is evil in your life, if there is defilement in your life, you may cover it up. And men, women, people, church may not know, but it says you are a vessel unto dishonor. You might be into witchcraft, into familiar spirit. You know what you do in the night, and then you are coming to the church, and somebody places you in the children's section. And they say, we're looking for workers. Workers in children's section, they're not enough. They say, sister, so and so come. How do you know she's a sister? Check up. Check up. And pray. And know whether that's a sister or not. And there are people that are walking around. And there are people that are complaining. Why is sister so and so not there? Why is sister so and so not? What's your business there? How do you know who she is? How do you know their lives? How do you know whether they are vessels in which heaven does not have any pleasure? And then they are campaigning. There's politics. And eventually, you put them in the children's section. They get there just one month. And many of those children are corrupted. We take them to the prayer warrior section. And we're praying for them. And the child begins to say, actually, it's mama so and so that took me there. It's uh, mama so and so that gave me this and told me I must give to another child. You see what we're doing? I so just put anybody, vessels in which there's no honor. A time of punching has come. Am I talking to good people here tonight? I said a time of punching has come. And if you don't see somebody in the choir, don't ask any question. You go and check up yourself. Should you be where you, ought, where you are? If you don't see anybody in the children's section, don't ask any question. Why is so-and-so not there? That's not your business. If you don't see anybody among the ushers, in the, among the choristers, don't ask any question. If God wants to purge his church, let him purge the church. I said let him purge the church so that we will know the people who are vessels unto honor. Those who really want to serve the Lord. And then you come, you're purified, you're holy, you're sanctified through and through, internally and outwardly. If you don't see a leader's wife, don't go and ask the leader's wife, where is your wife? Your wife is our leader. Your wife is this, your wife is that. Leave those leaders alone. Let the leaders who know their own wives and the leaders who know how their wives are at home, let them take the right decision. They are answerable to God. They are not answerable to you. All these bright being of people will position. From tonight, it will stop. And so that we will know the people who are going to heaven and the people who are ready to take the Bible as the word of God and live according to the word of God. Purified vessels, not the people who are polluted and they don't have any pleasure in the things of the Lord and God doesn't have any pleasure with them. We're going to, uh, Mark, uh, we're going to now Micah chapter 2. Micah chapter 2. We're reading from verse 10. In Micah chapter 2, and we're reading here from verse 10, Micah chapter 2, reading from verse 10. 
if you are polluted come out of that situation and then be cleansed and be purified Micah chapter 2 verse 10 arise ye and depart arise ye and depart for this is not your rest you are not saved don't trust there you are not sanctified don't trust there you are given a position you know you should not occupy don't trust there now my brothers fellow ministers with me you know something if you give your wife responsibility in the church local church district church or in the group and you know in all sincerity judging by the standard of the word of god that this woman if the trumpet sounds today she will not make it and then you overload her with responsibility so that when we come to the retreat instead of hearing the word of god instead of praying the responsibility you have given her you're my wife be in charge of this you're my second half be in charge of this and the woman doesn't have any chance to hear the word of god doesn't have any chance to listen and to pray what do you need to your wife you want to take her to hell you want to get her to hell let her sit down let her hear the word of god and sometimes when you do that your wife might ask you my husband if you stop me i know i should stop i know my life is not right i know i, I hear the preaching myself i know it but don't you think that if i stop people will be asking me questions of course of course tell them the truth tell them you have something to settle with god that's all right should not be ashamed of that are we here because of position are we here because of human honor we're here to prepare for heaven don't let anything hinder you where well, we'll get to this heaven i said we're going to get to this heaven and if you are not a wife you are not a husband you are just an individual by yourself here and you know your own life and we made a mistake and we put you somewhere and we said do this do this you should say excuse me sir i can't do it no i tell you to do it i'm your leader i come i command you to do it you must obey sir come my life is not right i'm going to this retreat to find out myself i need something from the lord spiritual so i can get ready for heaven and leave that work and come and get ready for heaven we're talking about readiness for christ coming you know if you do that between today and tomorrow something great will still happen to you because god will see your sincerity and god will see that you really mean to get to heaven that heaven you will get there am i talking to somebody there today i said that heaven you will get there in jesus name Micah chapter 2 verse 10 arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction what are we going to do now we come to the lord and as we come to the lord he'll wipe away he'll cleanse away that pollution that defilement ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel 36 reading from verse 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you give me an amen there and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you it will happen tonight you call upon the lord you see all this pollution all this defilement i want the lord to cleanse me and to wash me and to take everything away a new heart you are listening to our pastor 